If you love true crime and dark stories, then you'll love our other podcast, Dark Side of Wikipedia, with new episodes every Monday and Tuesday. He told them that in the year prior to Bundy's move to Utah, she had discovered objects that she couldn't understand in her house and in Bundy's apartment. His items included crutches and a meat cleaver that was never used for cooking. Just search Dark Side of Wikipedia wherever you download podcasts. You know, then this guy gets rich and he has some issues with sexual addiction. Yeah, and control. And, yeah. yeah. The uh, Keith Rainier story. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts and don't miss a single episode. It, in some ways, it starts to make things like Jeffrey Dahmer and that look tame, not in terms of, of the brutality of what they, they performed, but in terms of the psychology and manipulation of people. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Available wherever you download podcasts. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, a group of girls get together for a sleepover, but they're terrified to share with each other their own unique but similar traumatic dreams. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And of course, if you like the show, become an extra podcast person, an EPP, as we call them. You sign up at ghostpodcast.com or through Patreon. Patreon.com slash realghoststories is where you will find us. $5 a month gets you access to all of our bonus episodes. Every single one you get access to 300, uh, almost 300, like 50, some of them now, uh, as well as our advanced episodes, our archive of ghost stories, which is quite honestly the largest audio archive of ghost stories ever curated and created. Uh, and all of it's there for you, all commercial free. Again, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. It's Tony and Todd with you on today's episode. What's going on? We were talking a little bit about families off the air yeah. because we're sitting here at, at uh, holiday time. And I'm, I'm just wondering if everybody is is like me. The older you get, the more amplified the family unit becomes, meaning that the, the things that you dealt with as a child, mm -hmm. you know, maybe on a scale of one to ten, they were at a five. And then when you're at, a, at an adult on a scale of one to ten, they seem to be at a twelve. You know, they seem to be off the charts, the stuff you dealt with as a kid. Is it is it age that does that to people, or is it just lower tolerance that we have of it for other people? <laughs> I, I think what it is is you get older and you you kind of come into your own, and then the your past comes in, and the stuff that kind of bothered you before bothers you even more now. I had some stuff yeah. happen to me over the weekend, and it was like. I love my family, but I was kind of glad this weekend that I didn't <laughs> yeah. didn't have to spend any time with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say, but you're being honest. And, you know, sometimes you just got to say it, you know, and you got to be at peace. But, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder about that because it's it, with me, too. Like I, I'm having family over here for Thanksgiving and I love seeing them. But there's just there's there's not any real big issues or anything that pop up, but it's just all these little things. And it's like the same little things that annoyed me as a kid. But I just kind of like went along with it because I didn't have much perspective. Maybe perspective is what we're looking for here. It's it's that when when you're young, you don't have much outside perspective because this is this is it. This is family. This is your definition of it. And as you get older and you have more experiences, the more you're like, Oh, wait a second. Not everybody acts like that. Oh, wait a second. That's really not like how you should act or handle things this way or that way. And so it all kind of it, it stands out that much more. Right. And as an adult now, you can kind of pick and choose who you hang out with. Yeah. And so I choose to hang out with very few people. I'm pretty introverted <laughs> at this point You've in my life. That. You've always so done whenever that. <laughs> whenever I have to deal with anybody, whether it's family or it's just some Joe Blow on the street, yeah. it, it's a really short walk for me to jump over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> you, Todd has been the person who uh, at any get together um, that has ever occurred and it's been years since we've been at a get together together but it would always be like 
where'd Todd go? <laughs> it's like when, when you got uncomfortable, and I don't blame you because I get the same way, but I just never had the gumption to do it. You're just like, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I w- would consider myself an extroverted inver- introvert, which means yeah. I can be an extrovert and I can be really good at it for a certain amount of time. And then I just got to shut it off and go away. And yeah. so typically what would happen would be we'd be at a party or having some fun or whatever. And then I would find a small window where nobody was paying any attention to me. <laughs> yep. And I'd be out the door. <laughs> Every time, did yep. he? It's like, did he? Did you leave your own like going away party one year? <laughs> <laughs> one of my very uh, uh, many uh, going away parties. Yeah, I think I did probably sneak out on that too. I think we were all together. It's like, hey, here's, they got a cake for you. Where's Todd? <laughs> I think he left. I remember sticking around for the, uh, the the cake the year that there were boobs on it, but other than that, I don't remember it. I remember that. Yeah. I think I was like 14 or 15 at the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you were. That's fun. <laughs> I think I did a shot there, too. It was like one of my first shots ever. At uh, Yeah. Good times. Uh, yes. 855-853-4802. is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to our first story. It says, hey, y'all, just found the podcast shortly before Thanksgiving and found it comforting. I'm scared to share any more serious stories for fear of these things finding me again. So I'll share the only simple story I have. Just to warn you, it's bittersweet. For some background, I had recently moved back to the States after a three-year stint in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. My mom had finished her degree and was hired by the Diocese of Onsonboro, Kentucky, which is where we lived prior. So my senior year of high school, I was back in the familiar, suffocating environment of the Bible Belt and my equally suffocating Catholic school. I had a handful of friends that I still talk to now. We were a small group of misfits, and I thank God for them every day. I do not know where I would be if they had not been there to make things more bearable. I still spoke to my friends in Canada on occasion, but things slipped by me, and I don't think to contact people often, a quirk that will haunt me for the rest of my life. A few months after moving back to the States, I was talking to my friend, uh, Broen, who I had met in Canada. She was one of the few people I had a good relationship with. I felt like I could trust her. She was asking me questions about my body piercing. We were talking about tattoos for a little over an hour, I think. I'll never forget how much she wanted microdermal piercings, which always sent my nerves crazy. And she would always give me a big smile and laugh. I meant to speak to her more, but school got in the way, but I followed her on Tumblr and Facebook and kept up with her posts, so it sounded like we were totally disconnected. Although looking back, maybe we were more disconnected than I thought. Months went by, and I kept saying, I should should message uh, Broen and update her with what's going on. I never did. I always fell asleep. I was spending time with my now fiancé and his brother and sister. I would forget. We were a month or a few weeks out from our graduation, and Broens was close, too. This is where things get fuzzy. I don't remember if it was a Saturday or a Sunday. I just know it was a weekend. My mom had woken me up at 4 in the morning to tell me Broen had committed suicide. I woke up again around 7, and my mom was gentle in reminding me in case I was too tired to remember at 4. But I remembered. I spent the day crying and sleeping in bed. I don't remember eating anything that day. I don't know how long after this day this dream happened, but I remember it so vividly. And I cling to it as to what little comfort I have in this situation. The dream was Broen, and I had the sleepover we always talked about having and never was able to. We did everything we never did, including including it as what we wanted to do as little girls, pillow fights, makeovers, brushing each other's hair, girly things. When she was brushing my hair, I asked, are you okay? Are you happy? And she said, I'm incredibly happy. No more worrying about what my parents want or having to try and keep my sister in line. I can do whatever I like without concern about what people think. My second and last question was, are there bunnies where you are? Rabbits were her favorite animal, and she wanted a tattoo of one and one as a pet, but her parents always said no. Her reply was the last time I heard her voice. I have more bunnies than I could ever dream. She went back to brushing my hair and said, I said, good. I closed my eyes and that was it. She was gone. She had been gone for three years. I did nothing but replay old conversations, struggling to find a hint, a clue, anything that would have told me she needed me. So I hold on to the stream because I need to think it was her telling me she's okay. And it was not my fault. But even now, almost eight years, I feel somewhat responsible. 
If it makes it on the air, thank you so much. I want people to know, yes, you do touch people in a way only you can, and it does stay with them. And yes, you will be missed. Sorry if there's any spelling errors I didn't catch. I started crying towards the end of this. Hope you all have a good day. And this is not too much of a damper. Stay spooky, Mary. Thoughts on that story and the dream experience? Uh, the dream experience is extraordinary. I, I think um, when you lose someone to suicide, each one of if you've ever had that happen, the first thing you ask is, did I miss something? Did I not hear the word that I should have heard that would tell me that they were not okay? Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to have a dream, and again, whether it's just a dream in your mind or if this person actually came to her to communicate, either way, hopefully there's a little bit of comfort there. I, I certainly am a believer that it could be that individual's energy coming back and letting her know that, listen, I'm okay now, things are good. Um, it could be just in her, in, her, in her mind, it could be just a dream, but what, a, what an extraordinary story to tell and that that dream hopefully she can hold on to for a long time and help comfort her a little bit yeah i agree i think uh it's easy sometimes and it probably depends on i guess one's ego um as far as how much one believes they affect other people it's funny because i can sit here and like obsess on things that like others have said to me or do to me or whatnot to probably an unhealthy level <laughs> where it's just like and and i and, and think sometimes others are unaware as to how much that they affect other people but i never assign that to myself quite often and it's it, it's almost like i it's it's probably a self-esteem thing more than any where it's like you, you don't sometimes realize the effect that you have on other people good or bad i i, I think sometimes i over obsess on the bad sometimes if i if i say something wrong or i do something wrong and i feel bad about it i'll obsess on that but i never focus on the good that I do it for for anything like I just kind of feel like it's missed even though I know it's probably not by any means but I never I never think that way I just it never processes that way but I think it's something that the more we can think about those things and not in a way to like boost our egos and like look at me I'm doing so much good or anything like that but in a way to encourage us to do more good for others because I think sometimes we forget how much that does impact others in a positive way Absolutely. And in this day and age, the in the world that we live in, the more the more smiles you put out there. I know it sounds kind of corny and some people will say, well, it just doesn't matter. It does. Uh, energy moves. You've, you, you reach out and you push something. The thing rolls away. Mm -hmm. What you send out will come back to you. But more importantly, that little bit of energy that you give towards something in mm -hmm. a positive manner really does make a difference. It does. Definitely. Yeah. It does. Uh, I got an interesting graveyard story I will share in a moment. Uh, we were uh, out hiking uh, this weekend in a somewhat historically haunted town in uh, the area. Uh, and I, for the first time, I've not done this before. I busted out one of those um, ghost apps that uh, okay. you know can do some stuff. And I want some of your insight on it, but we'll get to it after this call. Hi. Okay. Let's hear... Your ghost story. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, my name is Christina. I just recently, get literally yesterday, found your podcast thanks to a friend who recommended I call and tell you my stories. And I did say stories, plural. Um, seems like my personal history from nine months old um, until recently has always been dipped in paranormal activity. Um, I have several, several stories, so I'm not going to tell them to you all now. If you're interested in them, please call me. Again, my name is Christina. It's 540. No phone number, Christina. Let's just, yeah, hear the story. Three. Stop saying your phone number. Range from my okay. nine month old, I don't recall, but my parents tell me a lot about me coming in and out of my crib at nine months old, and they don't know how it was happening. Um, all the way to my Wiccan grandmother, to the shadow man to um, red eyes in a backyard that uh, I came face to face with when I was 11, um, paranormal dreams when I was five years old, so many, so many paranormal activities in my life. I'm going to probably tell you just really quickly, um, <clears throat> my um, most paranormal story, I was 16 years old and I was dating
And it cut out. Let me open it again. I don't know why it cut out. Very courteous, nice young man. And I was dating a guy. He was my high school sweetheart. And um, very courteous, nice young man. Um, <laughs> little did I know that he was really into the Necronomicon and um, satanic worship. <laughs> very odd for 16 years old. Yes, I understand that. But he wasn't a creepy person. He just had this odd fascination and this dark side of him. But he was actually a really nice guy. Anyhow, one day we're sitting on the couch watching television and he begins to tell me his story of, uh, I know you guys know about the shadow man. And he begins to tell me about his shadow man who had been with him since infancy and that he would see him on a normal basis. Little did I know that that was going to lead me to see the shadow man. Um, and the experience that I had with the shadow man myself, um, even after we broke up and the experience that his girlfriend after me had, because she and I were friends, um, <laughs> uh, with the shadow man, it was an incredible story. Um, anyhow, like I said, he begins to tell me that he has this shadow man that's been with him since birth and he remembers seeing him over his crib. I, um... Later in life, began later during our relationship, began to, to see the shadow man myself, but nothing terrifying. It wasn't like there was an evil entity to it, just terrifying. I would, I would see, um, I would see him um, in my bedroom. He uh, one day was sitting at the edge of my bed, and I remember waking up and seeing him, and he stood up. And he was at the foot of my bed, I meant to say. And um, I looked at him, and when he stood up, I could feel the bed move from where he was before. And um, so almost not shadow, it just almost like he was actual human form or, or person uh, behind the blackness. And he did have on the, uh, the hat and, 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 the, and the long overcoat, um, the classic, I guess, shadow person. But... Um, I remember being so terrified that I couldn't scream. I finally gathered the, the nerve to, um, to to jump up and run to the bathroom that was to my right. I had a bathroom in my bedroom um, to run to my personal bathroom. And I, I, I ducked between the toilets and the, and the bathtub, and, and I crouched my, my knees up and, and dropped my head down, just afraid of what, what I was looking at in my bedroom. The next morning... Uh, my mom found me in the bathroom and asked me, what are you doing? Why are you, why, why are you sleeping there? And I couldn't explain. It, it was terrifying. And um, it was just awful experience. But like I said, I, he didn't actually try to hurt me. He was just watching me sleep. Um, anyhow, I tell my boyfriend the next day, okay, I think your shadow person visited me last night and it was quite terrifying. And he, he said that I, I needn't worry because he sent him to look after me and care for me and to protect me. Well, that was terrifying. And I said, I prefer that he does it. And he said, it's too late. You're a part of my life. And now he's a part of yours. Wow. Okay. So throughout um, time while we were dating, I would see him from time to time. If I was with girlfriends out wherever, I would see him underneath a, a street lamp or in a parking lot or wherever I was, he would be there. Not always, just occasionally he would be there watching me. We finally um, broke up about a year and a half later and I started to date this other guy. And I remember on my very first date with him, he had dropped me back off at home and he was standing facing the, the light that was at the end of the street, the traffic light, and I, I had my back to it, and his face just froze. And I looked at him and said, are you okay? And I turned around to see what he was looking at, and the shadow man was at the end of the street. Um, and he was terrified, and it disappeared. And he said, what, 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 what was that? He was so terrified 
I couldn't bring myself to tell him what I thought it was, and I never did. Um, <clears throat> later on, my, my little sister was um, really good friends with this young lady, and her older sister was kind of a girl that I knew. She um, started to date my ex-boyfriend, and they didn't date long, but when they broke up, apparently it was a not very happy relationship. She and I sat down, and we're talking one day, and she asked me, um, can I ask you about something? And I said, of course you can. And she said, it might sound strange to you, but I see a man who's shadow, and he, he's terrifying. And I started seeing him after he and I broke up, and I don't know what to make of it. And I said, well, he told me about this shadow man as well, but he told me that I was to not worry about it because it was there to protect me. She said it. No, it's different. It, it's not. I don't feel. I, I feel threatened by it. And I told her not to worry about it because he he did that to me to protect me. Um, later on, when he and I became friends again, I asked him about it, and he said yes, it wasn't there to protect her. She had told me stories where her windows in her bedroom would get smashed in, and um, they actually her parents had to replace the window twice. Um, things in her bedroom would get wrecked and destroyed. Um, and she actually even woke up one time with her beautiful long hair completely cut off. No one in the house did it. It seems as if her relationship with him being different than mine um, resulted in different results with this um, shadow person. Anyhow, he passed away. Um, we became friends later on in my 20s. And um, he passed away and from MS. And um, when he passed away, I stopped seeing, seeing the shadow person. But even while I was dating my current hu my husband now, the man who I'm married to, um, even when he and I were dating, I would see the shadow person. And I asked him about it. I said, you know, I see this shadow person. And at this point, I'm, I no longer live in Texas. I, I'm living in North Carolina. And we would talk on the phone, and I would tell him, I, I see the shadow person. He said, yeah, he's still with you. And we're friends, and, you know, um, he'll always be with you. But when he passed away, I never saw the shadow person again. Um, anyhow, that's that story. Um, so many other paranormal things have happened to me. And if you're interested in them, please give me a call. Thank you. Oh, we'd love to hear more, so please do call back into the show and uh, share more of your stories. Interesting. This shadow thing obviously seems very connected with the, the negative boyfriend or former boyfriend and was there until his passing. Well, my, my first question, if I had a chance to talk to this individual, would be when somebody uh, shows you a shadow person and tells you he's putting it there to uh, protect you. <laughs> why aren't you in another state by that point? Like before he's done with that sentence, why are you still hanging around? And you know what he's into as well. Exactly. You're exactly right. The thing that scares me about this is, as humans, we don't know enough about some of this stuff to really be messing around with it. Mm -hmm. And I even I even have people who are close to me that I worry about who are just getting into things like crystals and Reiki and stuff like that. And it's like, that's great. Just realize when you're dealing with energy movement and you're dealing with people who, quote unquote, heal energy and all that, you don't really know who's touching your body. It's like making sure you got the right doctor to, you know, take your appendix out if you need it done. Mm -hmm. Same kind of situation. This is a really creepy story. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the shadow person or the shadow itself was something this guy created or if it was part of his own energy that they were saying. I, I tend to kind of lean in that direction. Yeah. Um, and, and his energy treated one girl differently than another girl. But I'll tell you what, if somebody said, well, that's just, that's your shadow. I, I put it there to protect you. I'd be so far gone. It's not even funny. <laughs> but the thing is you can run, but can you hide from it once they've created You have it? to ask that question, right? We yeah. can't just pretend like <laughs> you, you run away from the thing. It's yeah. done. Who knows? I mean, just really be careful about who you date. That's my bottom line right there. <laughs> I, I think it's an interesting thing because, you know, it, it's, it, it, I think we write so many things off in relationships too, where it's like, oh, but they're a nice person, but they're this, but they're that. It's all the buts. And it's like, 
okay. And sometimes, you know, some you, you can be more picky than others, but I think a lot of times we, when there's so much, enough good, we just write off all of the bad. And all of the bad can build up. It can build up pretty bad, uh, you know, to the point of like what, what went on here where he's creating shadow people to follow you around. At that point, it's like, okay, you gotta, let's, let's re-examine the scales here and see how much is on the good side and how much is on the bad side. And it lends back to the point of like, it, you put a little good out there. Hopefully it continues to uh, manifest more and more and more. I think the same thing here. If you've got somebody who likes to put out a lot of negative energy, that energy can manifest in many, many ways, whether yeah. it's a shadow figure or just bad things happening. So yeah, I agree. All right. So uh, over the weekend, uh, my my parents are in town uh, and uh, we went for a hike in, in a really cool little uh, town area called uh, Cane Hill here in uh, Arkansas. And I, I wanted to take them out to this old abandoned homestead that's there. Uh, and the barn is still standing and there's like a chimney and all that. It's just, it's a really cool setting out in the woods and just something neat to see. We did that and kept going on the trail and eventually end up at the town's cemetery. Uh, and we're just wandering around that because we've always liked to do that since I was a child. But now, of course, there's all those the ghost apps and i'm really not a big user of anything like that um but i, I we're there and i'm like i got service let's break one of these things out and i'm really curious about the ones um what what is the the piece of equipment called that does I, the the app i was using was the ghost radar one of the most well-known ones where it says the words uh or it, it picks up on words but there's a, a technical name for that piece of equipment isn't it the the ovilus ovilus yes so it was you know ghost radar essentially is a version of an ovilus on a phone i don't know how it differs from the ovilus standalone you know, piece of equipment, but it's just what I had. So I was uh, out there in the graveyard. I was just kind of off in a corner by myself and I'm just trying it. I'm like, let's see what happens here. So I'm like, hey, you know, if, if is anyone here, um, you know, can you tell me what your name is or any, and I, I didn't get anything. I'm like, well, it's a real nice day. I can see why if you're here, if there's anybody here, why you'd really like it. it it's real pretty up because it's on this hill overlooking some valleys and mountains. So it's real beautiful up here. C can you tell me what you like about uh, this this area if you're here? It says sunshine. Mm. And that was about it for what I got. The The other um, responses didn't make a ton of sense other than one said leg and pressure as I was standing on someone's grave. So maybe that was somewhat making sense too. Um, <laughs> but, um, but that was kind of spooky to me. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, on the apps like that versus the standalone pieces of equipment, the obelisk and things that, that are used? Cause you do more of that than I do. I think that there's some use to it. Now, here's where I get concerned. You can be in a room talking with somebody about needing to buy, you know, a, a C5 transponder unit with a wing ding doohickey yeah. um, for, for work. And then you hop on Facebook and all of a sudden there's all these ads for these C5 transponders with the woohoo doohickey, you know? Mm -hmm. It just it concerns me that something that's digitized like that might be kind of listening to what you're saying about the nice weather somehow taking that and forming responses based on what you were saying. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't work because the same thing can be said about an, an actual obelisk as, as as well as like a spirit box, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think some of that stuff works. My only question with it is with AI, with our artificial intelligence, the way it is right now in in our programming of our computers and and websites and all that kind of stuff, is something built into it to listen to what you're asking and, and respond directly to those types of words? I don't know. And I that, would question that. And that's what I wonder about. Because I mean, a lot of these apps don't have, you know, big mastermind, large company programmers behind it. It's like one or two guys that, you know, put this thing together and then it's out there. Um, so, I mean, my question, you know, does it does it have the depth to do something like that, like what you're describing? Because I'm sure if you put in, had enough, you know, money behind it and people, you could easily create something that could easily do that. Um, it's just like Alexa responding to you intelligently or Siri right. responding intelligently. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's it, it's it's interesting. It, do you think is there a difference between someone using a phone app Ovilus versus the standalone device in terms of 
what it's sensing or, or something manipulating it? Could, could a spirit manipulate a phone just as easy as the, the ovilus? I would say yes. I think that energy can manipulate whatever it has the ability to manipulate. So in this case, I think the real test for this this particular app would be to use it again and again and again mm -hmm. in various situations and try changing your questioning a little bit, try changing the atmosphere of, of the setting, all that kind of stuff, and see if over a longer period of time you're getting uh, what seems to be correct responses mm -hmm. uh, coming back to you. That So I, I think, yes, it could be manipulated just like everything can be by, by energy. But I think to test out a piece of equipment, you use it as often as you can and use it in different situations to see what the response is. Do you use any uh, apps or anything like that? Or when you're out there, do you strictly stick to like the standalone pieces of equipment? I, I tend to stick to, to standalone equipment uh, and, and typically only because cell phones and stuff like that can really mess with K2 meters and mm. and, um, and and some of the metrics that way. So I tend to keep that off to the side unless we're using it to record audio. But um, I don't think that there's any reason to think that an energy, if it's able to manipulate a radio spirit box, mm -hmm. that it couldn't somehow manipulate your cell phone. And that's an interesting one too. And I played with that because on uh, one of the apps I have, it uh, it, it does a, basically a, a digital spirit box, right. but it's using online radio stations and it's, it's flipping through all of them. How, because I tried it and I, I, it's, it sounds just like the other spirit boxes. It's grabbing the different frequencies or streams very quickly, but how are you, how does it stand out that this is a specific word or something? I mean, I've heard the examples when somebody goes, listen to this response I specifically got, and they show it to you. But when you're standing there doing it in real time, it just seems very random as to what you could be getting out of any one of these streams that's has really nothing to do what you're asking. Why is it that, that is there something unique coming through it or is it really just kind of luck of the draw that the spirit's going to be able to communicate using what one of these streams is currently saying? Well, I think when you use, whether you use the digital one, like you were using or a spirit box that uses FM radio uh, mm -hmm. transmissions, I think either way, you've got to look at it as one piece of the tool puzzle. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you're standing there and you're hearing, you know, announcers go at the forecast today, well, obviously the spirit didn't just say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is, is the response in direct response to something you've asked? Is it more than one syllable long? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you get like a three or four syllable word, that's over three or four different frequencies. That is something to look at. Mm -hmm. um, again, if if you're sitting there and you're just getting all these random responses today, tonight, yeah, I hear that kind of stuff. Probably you're just getting radio signals. But if you're getting somewhat uh, of a response, it's more than just one syllable blips here and there. You're hearing the same voice a lot. That's a telltale sign. And then, like I said, it's it's one piece of the equipment puzzle. What else is going on? Are you catching any M, uh, EVPs? Are you seeing anything happening on the K2? Is there a change yeah. in the weather, um, like temperature or, or humidity, that kind of thing? I like to line up several different devices when I'm investigating and see something happen on more than one. And then I start going, that's interesting. What what was that? What What just happened there? Okay. So just so I understand this, more clearly with that when it's scanning through the frequencies and if you hear the voice or something that seems to make sense is that is is a spirit grabbing you know let's say the announcer's like hey bill bills you know bill belichick or whatever on the air today and let's say what's your name and it grabs bill because let's say the spirit's name was bill am i hearing that announcer say bill or am i hearing something else manipulating a radio wave and pushing their voice through it what, what the, am I? The, 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 the second is what you're hearing. Okay. You're hearing the energy manipulating the the white noise and the 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 frequency modulation, the okay. FM signal, and, and being able to communicate that way. So I'm not listening for the announcer and it to happen to say the right word at the right time, and the spirit's like, "Shit, that's right. There's the answer. Let's push that one through." <laughs> okay, because no, I, no, I, I, okay. I, and and if I'm, I, 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 I'm not wrong on that, but no, that's that's not my my oh. perception of how they they use that piece of equipment well that's you know th these are the things that don't really get discussed much and if you're like into it and you're a ghost hunt you you'll know more of how these things work but i've been doing this you know for eight years and i'm asking this question and i think a lot of people probably wonder the same thing like what exactly am i listening for that then that 
I guess, trains my ear better to know what to listen for. Uh, you know, it, it's almost like the intro to Fastball the Way. And, you know, there's Jewel and there's this or that. It's like, oh, that, that's what I always use an ex example of what that sounds like with the frequencies going through. Right, right. But, well, interesting. I learned something new today. Thank you for that. That's yeah. going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. EPP. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all of our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. Again, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. Ghost Stories Online.